Aloha. Today we're talking about grazing organisms for our small reef tank for newbies, the Nano Lagoon. When we select organisms to stock into the Nano Lagoon, the 10 gallon nano tank, we feel it's very important to select organisms that have the capacity to breed in the tank. That lets us put together an ecosystem that is both long lasting and resilient. When you have organisms that breed in the tank, their population size will increase according to the available resources, namely space and food, and if those resources are in short supply, the reproduction rate will decline. So the organisms will adjust to the situation in which they find themselves, and that's great. That's how nature builds an ecosystem. So let's look at these tiny little snails, uh, and they are so small you, can, you have to look pretty carefully to see them. We call them tiny turbos. Not really sure of the taxonomy. We do know that they are algae grazing intertidal snails that will breed in your tank, and that's a big bonus. They're tiny, they eat algae, and they breed in the tank. And if you look very carefully on this airstone, you can see where some of them have actually grazed away the diatoms on that airstone. Now the sound in the background is FIFA consuming a plastic bottle, so please excuse that. But what we really wanted to focus in on was what happens when you put in some sea lettuce, which is a pretty common macroalgae. We grow it here at Indo-Pacific and we also recommend it as a refugium species because it's so hardy. You put um, this ulva sea lettuce into the system and look at what these little snails do. They just love to walk around on that seaweed and they are scraping off algae called uh, epiphytes, little diatoms and other uh, microalgae that live on the ulva. They're also consuming the diatom film and they will breed in that ulva and the tiny snails can be seen arising as if by magic and crawling away on the seaweed. So what we've got here is basically a Tupperware. Here it's, uh, oh, what is this, maybe the two gallon size or not really sure what size it is, but uh, and, a, and an airstone and some seawater which can be changed. Now if you want to set this up sort of on a, a semi-permanent basis, uh, you go through the same steps as we went through in the Nano Lagoon, you don't even have to paint the tank or anything like that, but you put in a shallow sand bed, maybe scatter a few small rocks around the bottom, let the bacteria and the diatoms bloom, and then you introduce these grazers and some seaweed for them to crawl around on, and you have the makings of a little snail farm, and it's the coolest thing in the world. You can also do the same thing with the strombus grazers, because they breed for you in the tank and will lay their eggs and if you look carefully you see them on the glass you see the little snails crawl away and we think it's extremely important for folks to understand the benefits of using organisms that reproduce in the system in fact that is our definition of what organisms are suitable for inclusion in these small tanks ask yourself will they breed unassisted in the tank? Can they increase their population size according to the available resources? If so, that's an organism you can put into a nano tank. If not, chances are the tank and the system are too small for that organism.